Microbursts are a type of small bursty traffic pattern that lasts for only a few microseconds. This kind of traffic is the opposite to what we see with storage traffic, which is always large bursts. Bursts only become a problem and cause packet loss when there is oversubscription. That's when many sources are communicating with one destination. This results in what's known as a fan in, causing packet loss. All these sources send packets to one destination, causing congestion and then packet drops. One way to overcome this is to have sufficient buffering. It's critical for network devices to have sufficient packet memory bandwidth to handle these types of bursts. If they don't have the required buffers, fan-in can cause end-to-end -end latency that degrades application performance. Latency is never a good thing for applications, but it's still not as bad as packet loss. When the switch can buffer traffic correctly, packet loss is eliminated and the TCP window can scale to its maximum size. Essentially, there are two flows in the data center environment. We have large elephant and then we have smaller mice flows. Elephant flows might only represent a low portion of the number of flows, but they consume most of the total data volume. Mice flows are, for example, control and alarm control messages, and usually pretty significant. As a result, they should be given high priority over the larger elephant flows. But this is sometimes not the case with simple buffer types that cannot distinguish between flow types. Priority can be given by somehow regulating the elephant flows with intelligent switch buffers. Mice flows are often bursty flows where one query is sent to many servers. This results in many small queries getting sent back to the single originating host. These messages are often small, only requiring 3 to 5 TCP packets. As a result, the TCP congestion control mechanism might not even be invoked as a congestion mechanism because that takes 3 duplicate ACK messages. Due to the size of elephant flows, they will invoke the TCP congestion control mechanism. However, mice flows don't as they're just too small. But mice and elephant flows react differently when combined in a shared buffer environment. Simple, small and deep buffers operate on a first come serve basis and cannot distinguish between the different flow sizes. Everyone is treated equally. As a result, elephant flows can fill up the buffers and starve the smaller mice flows adding to their latency. Bandwidth aggressive elephant flows can quickly fill up the buffer and impact the sensitive mice flows. On the other hand, intelligent buffers understand the types of flows and schedule accordingly. With intelligent buffers, elephant flows are given early congestion notification and under stress, the mice flows are expedited. This offers a much better living arrangement for mice and elephant flows to operate together on the network. You first need to be able to measure your application performance and understand all the scenarios the flows are going to take part in. Small buffer switches are used for most critical applications and can do this very well. You are unlikely to make a bad decision with small buffer devices, so it's better to start by tuning your application this way. Unfortunately, out-of-the-box behavior is, gen is really only very generic and doesn't take into consideration failures or packet drops. Firstly, understanding your application and then tuning the host and network devices in an optimized least leaf and fa fabric design is the perfect way forward.